Welcome back to First Strike. It's UFC 307. I'm joined with the Apex Predators of the Octagon and MMA Jeff and Subhuman Gaucho. Got a big fight night lined up. The big numbered cards are always a lot of fun. We always have a bunch of great opportunities to make some money. Uh, let's figure out how we're going to get paid with this one. Jeff, how are we feeling? I am feeling fantastic, as usual. We uh, did all right last night at the uh, Contender Series. I'm looking forward to uh, the 6-15 start on Saturday for, uh, I think we got 12 fights on the card, and uh, we're going to some elevation uh, in Salt Lake City. So it's going to be uh, it's gonna be a good one. So, well, Sub, how about you, my friend? You ready to get paid? Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to this card. Um, yeah, the, these, uh, as you say, these pay-per-views, big number card, and uh, the elevation always throws a, a wrench into it, gives you some uh, – some good betting spots, so I'm looking forward to it. Absolutely. We definitely have a, an elevation spot out here with Salt Lake. Going to be a lot of fun. we got some title shots on the line, and we've got some main event looks from First Strike to try to help everybody cook the books. Let's not wait any longer. Without further ado, MMA Jeff's going to open us up, and he's going to talk about a banger here. Delice Holland. Jeff, tell us how we're getting paid. I gotta say, Holland is one of my favorite fighters. As we were talking backstage, uh, I just I like the I like the the cockiness and the shit talking during the fight. That doesn't always pan out for him, but uh, I do like that. Um, he's got a five or six inch reach advantage, and I think he's gonna need to use that in this one to uh, keep Delete uh, Delete say at distance. And uh, you know, he's coming off a big submission win. It looked pretty uh, gruesome as well. Um, prior to that, though, he uh, he lost by decision two in a row, and. Uh, I don't know. This one's going to be interest, interesting to see after the weigh-ins, given the fact that, uh, you know, again, we are at elevation. And uh, on paper, Delice is about 20 to 25 pounds heavier than Holland. So I think that might play a factor into this one. Uh, Delice, on the other hand, is a few years older. And, uh, you know, he's still in his prime, though. I think he's 36. So he's, he's not past his prime in the, yet. And, uh, you know, unfortunately for him, he's one and two in his last three. All three of those went to decision. However, prior to that, he's shown KO, he's shown subs, he's shown the ability to go the distance. So he's well-rounded as a fighter. Uh, as I mentioned, this one's going to be interesting uh, being at elevation if they do keep it on the feet. But uh, personally, I don't see it going that way. I think Holland's going to come out swinging in round one like he normally does. Uh, Delice is not going to like the uh, the power coming from Holland. I think he's going to uh, Delice is going to try to close the distance, push him up against the fence, uh, as we've seen in the past. Holland does not uh, show good takedown defense, and on top of that, when he does get taken down, he he doesn't he, he lacks urgency to get up, which concerns me. So I think we're going to see uh, Delice push him against the fence, trying to drop him to the ground. I think it's going to be a rinse repeat round one, two, and three. And uh, I like Delice here. Um, I like Delice by uh, the, the decision, but I'm going to roll with Delice as the dog. I'm going to go with the Georgian fighter. Uh, I don't think he's going to get put out there. Um, I grabbed him yesterday at plus 145 on the money line. The line has now shifted to plus 125. Right before the show, I saw it at 124. So there's going to be some continued steam rolling in on Delice. But uh, I'm rolling with him on the money line. I like it, Jeff. I'm looking forward to this one, man. Um, you know, my heart always kind of has to be with the Detroit original and Kevin Holland. I do love the guy. But, uh, yeah, man, uh, Delice off a lot thicker and could easily top time him here. So I, I do uh, agree with the breakdown there. All right. So co-main event of the evening here, we've got a bantam weight championship, Rocky Pennington, Juliana Pena. What are you doing here, Mike? Wow. We got a changing of the guard. And the question is, does the belt change hands tonight? Uh, I'm going to tell you this. I've got a little flip flop in the script that I'll share with you guys at the end of this thing here, but Got to evaluate how we've gotten to where we are. It's a women's bantam weight battle, and it's for the strap. We see that we've got, you know, a little Raquel Pennington. We've got ourselves a little Juliana Pena. And I think this tail of the tape here is looking at this thing. Amanda Nunes was the perennial champion, the powerhouse of the women's bantam weight division. Uh, surprise, surprise. Uh, you know, we see a little bit of an opportunity for Pena to beat Nunes. She gives her an immediate rematch. Nunez comes back, beats her, gets the title back, and then immediately retires, creates a vacancy in January. Raquel Pennington fights Myra Buena Silver. Silva gets a unanimous decision. And decision be the tail of the tape for this thing. Traditionally, we've seen Pennington. Nine of her last 10 fights have gone by judges' decision, and she's been winning. So that tells me quite a bit about the judges liking the, her style, the way that she goes about it. 
On the flip side here, how about a third straight title fight for Juliana Pena? But the deal here for me is, Jeff talked about it, elevation. Inactivity in a fighter in Pena. She hasn't fought in over two years, and she's taken on a fighter that fights at Colorado Springs, which, believe you me, is elevation. Uh, I could tell you plenty of stories about being at Colorado Springs and what that does to you from your uh, from the gas tank perspective. And as we look at this thing, traditional women's fight. We like to talk about these things going the distance and uh, used to think back in the day, hey, if I'm going to distance with a women's fight, I want a dog cart or I want a dog ticket. Turns out that's not the case. In the last three years, when you get to decision in a women's fight, the favorite has won 66% of the time. There's been a whole ton of smack talk at this one here. You know, we've got Pena, the master's degree in yapology, if you ask Raquel Pennington. And uh, she's telling him, listen, uh, she's not a big fan of what's happening with Pena, or I'm sorry, with Pennington. She says she's going to do whatever it takes. She's going to poke her eye out. She's going to bite her fingers. Normally, I might be involved with something like that. But again, Pennington claps back, says that Pena's bad representation of this Bantamweight division. I think the tail of the tape here is gas tank, gassing out, and Pennington in a slower paced fight, being able to take control, going the distance as we've seen her do 90% of her fights. And uh, at plus money here, or at least even money now, we've got an opportunity to see the champion retain the strap and get her done at even money. I'm going to take Raquel Pena or Pennington. I'm sorry, Raquel Pennington at even money plus 100. Judge's decision. I, I, got, I like the look, Mike. Uh, I don't know if there's going to be any finger biting based on the uh, the guy who bit the other guy. I forget who it was. And uh, did he get banned from the UFC for that? So I don't know if there's going to be any finger biting, but I could appreciate the uh, you know the motivation in her to uh, to get that win. But uh, let's go to Sub here. He's bringing us to the main event: Alex Pereira versus Khalil Roundtree. Sub, how are we? Uh, how are we getting cash and tickets on this one? Yeah, man, I'm looking forward to this uh, this light heavyweight championship here. We've talked Alex Pereira a number of times on this program, and I'm sure everybody's more or less familiar with him. He's probably the biggest draw in the UFC at this point, and he's been special, man. He's he's only has 14 professional fights. His last seven fights, every single one of them, has been against a current, former, or future champion in the UFC. It's really something to behold what he's been able to do with that because he's of course six and one during that time just getting caught uh in that lone ko loss to israel adesanya um a lot of people are going to be with Pereira. i get it i've been with him an awful lot on the other side here you've got roundtree uh, most people you know not showing roundtree a whole lot of respect saying he doesn't deserve to be here but he is on the longest win streak in this division and he's going to get the fight that he wants here you know not going to be worried about takedowns. That is probably his biggest deficit. And he's a really quality Muay Thai striker. Now, I don't know if he wins this fight, but I do think he keeps it competitive, especially early. He's going to have some uh, some ways of kind of neutralizing Alex Pereira, I think. You know, these guys are both southpaws, so that devastating left hook that Alex Pereira loves to employ, it's not going to be there the way it is in most of his fights. And Cleo Roundtree, probably the best at checking leg kicks in this division. That's one of Alex Pereira's real gifts. So I like this one to go over that one and a half. I think that's too low. You get it at a minus 125. And I'll probably even ladder this thing. I don't know exactly how high, but, um, you know, at least fight to start round two at plus money. Fight to go over two and a half at a big plus 150 something. Um, I think Roundtree can stick around here at the very least. I like that play. I think it's a it's a nice little opportunity, but you nailed it. You know, you talk about these guys, and uh, we got a little striker versus striker challenge with Pereira. He's got terrible takedown defense. Good thing for him, Roundtree doesn't take anybody down. He's got no takedowns in his in his career in the UFC. So nice little look there at a minus one twenty five, the main event, and that's how we're going to bring you guys to the window here with first strike plus little benefit here if we look at this thing in your parlay the traditional first strike parlay. It's a plus 706 for the three of these. Can't wait to talk to you guys uh, about what we're doing for UFC 307 when we get the full sports money crew together. We start at 6.15 p.m. We're going to go around the prelim card, see how far we can get talking about our best bets, our favorites with the full crew. Don't want to miss out on that thing. For all the boys at Sports Money, for MMA Jeff, for Subhuman Gaucho, appreciate you guys watching First Strike. 
hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and share your favorite fights in the comments below. We'll see you guys Saturday. Good luck.